Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV and I'm back up in Yorkshire with my great friend and brand ambassador Paul and we're fishing the River Calder. Now I fished the Calder a fair bit further upstream at uh, Murfield when I fished some Riverfest qualifiers. I love the river. Looks a bit different down here. Uh, tell us about it Paul. Yeah it is a bit different here James. Yeah it's, it's deeper, it's slower and uh, it's just a great winter venue and one of the reasons we're here, as you know, it was the Northern River Masters final a couple of weeks ago and it fished really well and, and I believe one of your teammates yeah, came, did, um, came up here. Yeah, Tony started. Marshall. Tony yeah. Marshall won it. Yeah. Um, he, he had two great days fishing, didn't he? But he as did. you say, it was very consistent and fished really, really well. Um, I didn't fish the River Masters, the Northern River Masters this year, but I'm definitely going to fish it next year. I think it's a brilliant competition. So. Hats off to you and the other organisers because uh, I think you've got a great match in the calendar again. Yeah, well, thanks for that, James, yeah. and, and thanks for your help as well with the website and what have you. No problem. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been an absolutely fantastic venue for the final. This We've had 54 anglers on the final. We're 52 fish because we had two drop out, unfortunately. But uh, out of the 52 anglers, 38 hit double figures of roach. Brilliant. And it's all been roach fishing, a few chub and an odd bream, but primarily roach. And uh, that's why I've invited you here today, because I know you like your roach fishing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I can't wait to get fishing. Mm. Um, we've selected two pegs, haven't we? Not far from the car park. Yeah, we made it easy for Chappie, haven't we? Again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. But uh, I was a little bit delayed on the motorway, so we're probably going to, what, fish like a, a four hour session, something like yeah, that? Yeah, I think that's all we'll get with the lake yeah. now. Yeah. Um, so we'll go and get set up and yeah. perhaps talk about the pegs um, yeah. when we uh, get them. Yeah, we can do. And yeah, you're, you're going to fish the pole today, aren't you? Yeah. Because we decided that yeah. we'll do two different methods. Yeah. So you're going to fish the pole. I'm going to fish running line, which will be bolo. And hopefully the waggler is what I'm looking forward to. Brilliant. Well, so, it'll be yeah. nice to see the contrasting styles. It will. And uh, See how and, we get uh, on. And, and yeah, and, and as normal, are we going to have a pound on it? We've got to have a pound on it. We, we, we? have, yeah. Come on then, yeah, let's do look. it. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, mate. Come on, Munt. Let's go find our pegs. <laughs> Well, I'm fishing on peg 48 and Paul's fishing on the peg upstream. It's a nice looking peg. Obviously, first thoughts are it's not too pacey. Uh, it's really quite slow. Um, I've plumbed the depth and I've got around about 10 or 11 foot uh, between 13 and 14 meters. So looking at the peg, the pace is definitely picking up the further you go out. So that's what's making me think I want to fish, uh, you know, out towards the middle of the river. Now I'm going to put a chopworm line in close as well. Paul told me there was some nice perch caught in this area in the, in the Northern Masters final. And because uh, I don't really know the venue, I'm going to start off quite cautiously. So the way I'm going to feed it is I'm going to feed three or four balls of ground bait. I'm going to cup them in on the pole. Uh, I'm not going to go mad with the feed and I'm just going to take it from there. So obviously if I start to catch well, I can increase the feed. Um, but I don't want to overfeed the peg, not really knowing too much about it. It's quite reminiscent really of um, the Warwickshire Avon near where I live at Barford above the Weir. So I think I'm going to approach it in that way. So the ground bait I'm using today, it's a dynamite bait. I'm using this um, Naturals Silverfish mix, which I really, really like. I've been using that a lot this year and I'm mixing it with a bit of their river as well. Um, just to stiffen it up a bit. Um, you can see it's produced a, a beautiful, nice fluffy mix and a little bit sticky as well with that river. Um, I'm going to add a handful of hemp into the mix. Um, it's always a good idea not to over wet your ground bait if you're going to add hemp because obviously there's moisture in the hemp. So I don't want to make it too soft but that's now absolutely perfect. And I'm just going to add, I don't know, sort of half a handful of casters. 
and uh, my thinking here is you know this is a lovely nice attractive mix um, hopefully I can attract some fish onto the line that I'm going to start on um, without overfeeding them perhaps if I was fishing a match I might consider actually balling it in uh, to create more of a disturbance and try and attract some fish off the anglers around me but there's only me and Paul fishing today so I'm just going to start off by cupping four balls in if it was a, a colder day it's still quite a nice temperature it's uh, about six or seven degrees at the moment I might reduce the food content by putting some soil in and if I wanted to attract you know if it was hard I might add some lean to create a cloud but at the moment I'm I'm just going to use neat ground bait watch out man and see cupping the ground bait in like this and um, it's a really accurate way of feeding I can put the feed exactly where I want it and uh, I think that's really key because thinking about where you're feeding the ground bait is really really important um, I was perhaps guilty for a, a long time feeding right in front of me even on a slow moving river like this but what I tend to do now is I like to introduce my ground bait downstream so I'm going to put it probably a good metre and a half below me my thinking there is it just means I can present my float so much better than if the feed was right in front of me and, and that's even more the case when you've got a, a more powerful peg so I think a big mistake is not feeding your ground bait in a position where you can actually fish over it effectively I also like to feed my ground bait where I can actually loose feed and fish just slightly past it so I wouldn't want to put my ground bait at the maximum length of my pole so some days you'll find that you'll catch the fish or the better fish further out but also fishing at that length it's a very easy length to fish with uh, it's very very efficient so there we go. Okay, so we'll talk in a bit more depth about the rigs later on. Um, but to start with, I've set three rigs up. I've got a two gram bolt rig. I'm gonna start on that. You'll notice I'm actually using the top six of my pole. Uh, even though the river's not flowing too hard, um, I like fishing a long line on the rivers, it just means I can explore around the feed area and particularly if I'm loose feeding I can present my bait where the fish are feeding easily. So let's see if that's brought any fish into the peg. So I'm going to lower my rig in just upstream of that ground bait. Before I um, started, I obviously plumbed up and had a quick run through with my float just to see if there was any snags. But it seemed pretty snag free. And uh, shelves off quite deep really, so even just at six metres out, I've got a pretty much a similar depth to what I have at 13 and 14 metres. So that two gram rig's a nice positive rig to get my bait down and fish efficiently over my feed and obviously I've set up a lighter rig as well which I can fish on the drop uh, if the fish come up in the water or if I want a more sort of finesse type of presentation but no bites to start with so I think I'm gonna loose feed some casters to start with 
and I'm going to loose feed them just slightly past my ground bait and I think some feeding casters like this hopefully can maybe attract some bigger bigger fish well, nothing on the maggot I started on a single red maggot and I'm now going to try double fluoro pinky and see if I can tempt something on that. Even though I'm, I want to fish a chopworm line closer in, I'm not going to feed that yet, but I'm going to fish that at six metres. And uh, I don't want to feed too many spots to start with. I just want to gauge what's happening. So hopefully if I start getting some bites, I can start feeding a chopworm line as well. There we go, that's my first bite. Starting to get a little bit worried. And feels like a roach. Quite a nice stamp as well. Probably two or three ounces. Nice one. Perfect conditions today. There's not really a breath of wind at the moment. Another small roach. Pole fishing on rivers is uh, a method that's that I, I really find very successful. Um, in my mind, if I can fish a pole effectively on the line where I think the fish are I don't think you can beat it in terms of presentation um, obviously the presentation in terms of being able to control your float and also being able to fish light floats that you put you wouldn't be able to fish very easily with a rod and line and also to fish finer so finer hooks finer finer lines Um, really is a very effective and efficient way of fishing. Not totally necessary, as I'm sure we'll see today, um, with Paul fishing his uh, rod and line. But definitely when I'm match fishing, my thinking is if I can fish the pole over the rod and line, I want to fish the pole. If I'm honest, this float, this two gram float, is perhaps a bit on the heavy side. Um, when I talked to Paul at the start, I think Paul's peg's a bit deeper. His peg's about 16 foot deep. So that's why I started with a two gram float. And obviously when I um, plumbed up, I found that this peg was a bit shallower, but I'm going to stick with it. It's not a bad thing to have a, a positive rig like this. Um, if the fish will have it, Obviously it means I can be fishing in a more positive way and I will try a, a lighter rig and if I feel that this is is perhaps a bit too positive I can always switch over to say a, a gram and a half or a gram rig. But especially when you fish a new venue like this, these are all the sort of things that are are going through your head. So the other sort of consideration when I'm match fishing is the stamp of the fish. So, you know, some days the stamp of what they are, you know, and, and you just have to catch them as efficiently as you can. But 
some venues there's bigger stamp fish and working out how to catch them really makes a difference so be interesting to see how today develops i'm hoping that i'll be able to catch some fish on the caster i haven't really considered loose feeding hemp today if i was fishing here in the summer i think hemp would be a, a key bait but when it gets into the winter period like this i tend to for the most part reduce my sort of hemp fishing obviously i'll use it as a, a tractor and as a feed bait like i did in my initial ground bait but I tend to do better in the winter months uh, concentrating on maggots casters and pinkies um, and another favorite bait which is bread so i'm pretty sure bread would be a good bait here as well but we're getting bites on pinkies and maggots here at the moment so there's obviously fish about Be interesting to see how Paul's getting on. Right, I'm fishing uh, Peg above James today. He's set off on the pole and ground bait, I believe, so Chappie tells me. I'm going to concentrate running line, as we said in the intro, with the bolo and a waggler. I've set off on the bolo and uh, I've had a couple of fish to start with. I'm going to feed hemp and castor mainly. If it gets a bit harder, I'll go on the maggot, but I'm hoping that uh, the hemp and caster gives me better, better fish than what uh, James will be catching on the pole. The Calder is a venue that I'm fairly new to, really. I've fished it for about four or five years now, and uh, the pegs we are fishing today, I've never fished them before, but they're pretty much all the same around here. Great for roach fishing in the winter months. And uh, we've got depths of somewhere between 10 foot and 13 feet, I would say. The pegs where we are today. It's absolutely perfect. Nice steady flow, full of roach. And uh, later on, later in December, January time, days move in and it, the fishing really does really does become good so i've been told as we as we said in the intro the northern river masters was fished here a couple of weeks ago and uh, i drew a bit further upstream in uh, in an area not brilliant but i still had 10 pound odd on the second day which i was well happy with and uh, it was a really successful event so we've invited james and chappy down today just to experience the fishing here. The bolo I've got set up today, I'm using a 16 foot number one rod, which is absolutely perfect for this. Nice and soft for them roach. And uh, I'm fishing with a really light, it's a topper float. The float originated from a, an angler who designed them. They used to be called topper askings. And it's really sensitive, it's a crow quill with a, with a cork body. And I'm fishing with a 
as light a float as I can get away with. And this is about two and a half grams. So I can cast across into the floor. It's an overhead cast, so when we show you the shotting and what have you later on, it's very, very simple to try and avoid tangles because I am casting overhead. But the sensitive float really pays dividends with these roach. And when I pick the waggler up later, that's on uh, the 15 foot number one version. And I'm hoping that's going to get us better stamp a fish later on when the fish lift up in the water. I plumbed up and uh, I'm fishing probably, I would say six inches off the deck at the moment. The swim does get shallower as it goes down towards James there. So uh, when I get opposite James, my float drags under, so I know to pull back then and don't pinch any of his fish. But I'm uh, catapulting quite a few casters and, uh, and an amount of hemp early on, just to try and draw fish into the area. That noise of the caster and hemp hitting the surface Hopefully we'll pull fish in from around wherever they're living at the moment. But uh, I'm half an hour in now and I've had six or seven roach, I think, something like that. And uh, not a bad quality, a decent quality. I've found that when you're fishing pole and whip closer in, the fish are a lot smaller. And of course, because I'm fishing caster on the hook, it generally produces better fish anyway. So we'll see how it goes. I might go to Maggot to get more bites, but at the moment I'm quite happy with, uh, with the way it's going. When I draw in from, from this cast, I shall uh, demonstrate how I cast out overhead. And it's, uh, it's something you don't generally do on the bolo because you can get tangles, but uh, I'm sticking with it because I can, like I said earlier, I can fish with a lighter float, so. It's pretty much a pendulum action, a stand up. Hold it all in the hook length. Let the olivet swing out, swing it back. And then cast and trap the line well in advance of it hitting the surface so all the your hook length and that last dropper shot all spreads out in a line and uh, you can avoid the tangles pretty much with that you get the odd one but it's uh, it's well worth casting like this because you can get away with that lighter float and uh, you've just got to put up with the odd tangle which you're going to get Having said that, I've fished full matches and not got a tangle using this method, but uh, it does take some perfecting. But the, the most important thing is trap that line well in advance of it reaching, reaching the water surface, because if you don't, it will land in a tangle. The conditions seem absolutely perfect today. We've got hardly any, any wind at all just a slight breeze now and again. It's overcast at the moment, I'm hoping it stays like that all day because that's when the roach feed best. And there we have, that's my smallest, smallest fish today so far, but these roach are in absolutely perfect condition. Most of them never seen a hook before.
I've been fishing for about two hours now and um, the sport's been really good, especially the first sort of hour, hour and a quarter. Um, I caught quite steadily, uh, mainly on maggot, on my heavier rig, which is a two gram rig. I have caught some better fish on casters, but not as quick. But the last sort of 20 minutes, it's just gone a bit slow. And uh, I'm just trying to work out what's happening at the moment. I'm continuing to just loose feed casters but I'm just thinking I might cup in a couple more balls of ground bait. I've had some roach sort of but my biggest roach will be about four or five ounces um, but a lot of them are sort of two ounces so I've been trying to try and work out how to catch the better stamped fish. I, I thought at one moment that the fish had come up in the water but um, that's the smaller sort of stamp that I'm catching. And I thought I'd catch better on my lighter rig, but curiously, the heavier two gram rig has been the best rig at the moment. I'm using uh, quite a positive rig. It's got an olivet. I'll just see if I can show you. Got a, an olivet about, what's that? That's got to be nearly three foot up from the hook length. I've got three number eight droppers there and I'm just trying a longer hook length with no droppers on. Earlier on I was fishing with a, a shorter sort of six inch hook length and I was actually using a double bulk to make it more positive because I was getting bites really quickly but now it's gone a bit harder. I just thought I'd try a, a longer hook length and I'd also stepped up to a size 16 Drennan fine match hook but now I've gone back down to an 18. I just felt that the fish, for some reason, weren't feeding quite so confidently. But I'm gonna persevere like this, and I think if it doesn't pick up in the next 15, 20 minutes, I'm gonna cup some more ground baiting. I'm also feeding maggots at six meters. I haven't tried that yet, but I'm sort of thinking that could be interesting to try. Um, and if I don't catch roach, then I shall put some uh, chopworm and casters over that line and see if I can catch a perch. I've had one perch out on the 13 meter line. It's obviously a prolific venue and uh, I'm just trying to work out the best way to catch the fish as quickly as possible, but also try and improve the stamp. I know that um, Paul's catching well on his bollow and he's catching some, I've seen him catching some bigger fish. so. It's really interesting to see the, oh, that one's come off. The different sort of styles and maybe the fact that Paul's fishing further out on his bollow, he's getting a better stamp of fish if he's getting out further into the flow. But I haven't tried further out yet. I, I want to try and keep the fish on my 13 meter line if I can. But I am feeding 
past it as well. So I might try at 14 and a half meters and just see if there's uh, some fish I can pick off just sitting past my feed. But I'm really enjoying fishing this venue. It's a beautiful place and obviously got a, a great head of roach here. Best bait for me has been single red maggot. Um, I have had some fish on the caster and they were a better stamp, but I was having to wait a lot longer for a bite. But this is the sort of stamp I'd be happy catching, that sort of three ounce stamp fish. They soon build a weight with those. So, looks like that longer hook length is obviously perhaps done the trick. I'm starting to get a few bites again. It might be a case of sort of mainly catching on the maggot and every so often switching to a caster, catching a, a better roach and then going back to the maggot. All the fish I've caught have been right on top of my feed. I haven't really caught anything down the peg at all. So on the inside line, I'm not feeding it all the time, but sort of every five or 10 minutes, I'm putting in a good amount of maggots just to give me a, another option. The, the stamp of the fish and the fact I've got good depth close in, I, I'm kind of regretting not setting a whip up because I think if I could catch those fish on say six meters, seven meters, I think I could catch them more efficiently. Right, well I'll give you a brief update of how uh, I'm doing at the moment. It's halfway through the session, a couple of hours in. I've had probably about 35 roach. Most of them are what we call a decent stamp, sort of four ounces, round about that. Some a little bigger. So I think I'm doing okay. Um, Still trying to work out really whether they want loads of feed, proper proper pouchfuls, or just tiny amounts. It seems to me that if I give them a a good pouchful of casters, followed by a bit of hemp, and then I reverse that, a good pouchful of hemp and a few casters, that seems to be working out about the best. I find that just a dozen casters and a dozen grains of hemp is uh, not getting me regular bites. So there must be plenty of fish there and uh, I've had a go on the waggler but I've not had a bite on that. I thought they might have been up in the water by now but uh, that's not happened yet. But there's plenty of time left for that. Well a couple of hours anyway. Chappie tells me James is having a a little bit of a problem. He, he's all small fish with the odd better one, so there's a good chance that I might be in front at this moment. But all that can change. I'm persevering with with the uh, bolo, and just as you join me, I get my first 
first tangle of the day. I think we might have to uh, have a look at that again. Yeah. Right, I'm going to have a go at Waggler now anyway. Always the case. Been fishing it well so far. And I just got my first little tangle there, but I'll have a go on the Waggler. And we'll see how that, uh, if that gets me a bite or not. I'm finding I've been getting a couple of iffy bites, little touches on the fall, on the bolo. So uh, I've got a feeling they might have lifted up in the water. So I've got the waggler out now. And uh, that's a three AAA waggler, peacock insert. Set at probably three foot shallower than, no, maybe two foot shallower than the bolo. And there's my answer straight away. I've got one and a proper bait. I'll just get this in. It's a smaller stamp fish that one, but maybe that's what I've been getting the bites off just this last 10 minutes. And the waggler, um, I've got set up quite unusual way really. I've, I've got it set out more like a a pole rig, hemp pole rig. I've got just the usual shot around the waggler, base of the waggler, holding it in place. And uh, my favourite trick of a bit of lead wire wrapped around the waggler to give it the bulk of its weight. And then down the line, uh, down to my hook length, I've got strung out styles size 10 and uh, my thinking behind that is I get a nice gentle fall and uh, it seems to be uh, in the past it's got me better bites and it gives me a better presentation and it uh, seems to work really well so uh, if the fish are now at this depth We'll give this a go for a while. See what happens. Well, continuing with the waggler, I'm just starting to feed caster and caster alone at the moment. And uh, I'm casting slightly downstream of where I'm sat and feeding slightly downstream. And I'm finding, I'm getting the bites probably three quarters of the way down the peg. And uh, I reckon that's where the casters are dropping through the water and arriving at the depth that these fish are at. So uh, constantly getting, getting bites in that area. So, uh, I think that's that's the way forward, but I've got to cast upstream of that to allow the fall of fall of the hook bait with the depth I'm fishing. I found that if I cast downstream too far, I'm not getting a bite. So it's a case of more of the uh, the float and the bait running to the fish rather than dropping it on the heads. Waggler's going through lovely, performing really well. Um, I'm not sure yet whether the, it, it's the best or not. The bolo was getting me, Ooh, had a bite there. The bolo seem to be getting me more bites, but it, it is getting a bit dodgy now. I'll just get this in. Rebate, Mr. Bite there. The uh, the rod I'm using, one of my favourite rods for both stick work and the waggler, is uh, the CR10 15 foot match number one. I also have the zero as well, but I just, that number one's just a little bit beefier for punching the waggler out. I tend to use 
the zero more on the stick float work but it's working really well I've coupled that with the uh, 3000 reel so it's a, a great combination really comfortable in using it I just want to get those roach lined up so I can get in front of James properly the styles are working really well you can see the float just settling as each one drops down and I'm getting little touches really iffy at the moment sometimes get that if a pike moves around you know it's uh, it might be the case that that's about but I haven't had a pike take a roach yet got another one now seem to be smaller fish on the waggler so uh, we might be looking at going back on the bolo in a minute Chappie's come back and told me that um, Paul's probably got about eight pound at the moment so we're fishing into the last hour we've got one hour left and uh, I know I haven't got eight pounds I think I've probably got I don't know five pound so I'm clearly behind. Um, in the last, well, about half an hour ago, I had a, a pike strike and I've actually had two pike um, take a roach as I've been bringing it in and it's definitely uh, affected my fishing. I've had a go on the inside and caught some smaller roach. Um, but I think to try and claw things back, uh, I'm gonna up the feed on the pole at uh, 13 and 14 and a half meters and I'm going to put some chop worm in close in just to see if I can get a couple of perch because I'm definitely um, behind him at the moment. I think that's a stick or something, yep. Yeah. One of the pike I actually lost and uh, destroyed my rig. So I've switched to a different rig now. I've got a gram and a half float on instead of two gram and um, it does seem to be fishing a bit better so it's all to play for in the last hour but I'm definitely need a few snookers I think right in terms of feeding what I tend to use I like these plastic pouches by the way they're really good for for dropping your casters in and firing them out there. I'm using an amount of casters like that. Every single run down pretty much. If you can see that. And then uh, it's the same with the hemp really. Just grab some hemp. I'm just about running out. I might have to top up. And same with the hemp. Same amount. And that seems to be working the best today. There's a lot of roach in here, and it's just a case of trying to get through the smaller ones that are in the upper layers and getting a few casters and a few grains of hemp to drop down to where those bigger roach are below. And uh, it seems to work well today. In regards to bait, uh, a match on the calder, you would typically use I would say around about a pint of casters maybe a pint and a half two pints of hemp today I've fed a bit more um, one reason it's not in a match although I am taking James on for a pound so I'm trying to push and press the swim a bit more to see if I can get some bigger stamp fish and uh, it does seem to be working so as with me in most matches I'll always have probably four, four pints of casters with me because I can always take them home and jar them up and I'll just show you a jar that I keep them in while we're on. Casters I don't use go into my jam jars and they're in there and they'll keep for three weeks in there. No problem using them. They're, they're a good two weeks old 
pimp we're two and a half now because we're fishing midweek. So uh, there's a good tip for you. We'll catch up with that some other time maybe. Always in a always in a, a jam jar, a coffee jar. I have all different sizes and uh, always put a plastic bag around them to seal the top. Looks after the casters great. Well we're coming into the last couple of minutes of the session and um, I've spent the last sort of 15 minutes trying to catch a, a nice perch on the chop worm and I failed but um, I kept trying the long pole and I could pick off a few roach on maggot or caster um, but I had another pike strike so it kind of forced my hand a bit really and um, I needed to gamble and try and catch a couple of nice perch but it looks like I failed. But, uh, I'm just fishing with half a lobworm. Um, I've chopped up some lobworms and casters and I've fed three or four times just on this spot about six metres out. And um, I did have an indication a minute ago, but I think it was probably just a small fish. But I'm just going to fish until Chappie shouts all out and then I'll show you the rigs I've been using. <laughs> That's it then. That's your lot, Paul. That's it. Three o'clock. <laughs> so that's the all out. We might need a steward's inquiry. So the best rig for me today has been a, a positive Olivet rig. Um, that's a gram and a half that I'm using now, a census, I think that's a census haven with a fibre tip and a, a cane stem. Um, I did catch on a two gram one as well, but definitely the gram and a half was better. Um, I think I showed the rig before, but I've got a, an Olivet there. And in the last sort of hour, I've been catching on the caster and I've spread my shot out. This one's got number 10 shot on, so I've sped one, two, three, four number 10 shot, and then down to my hook length. Um, the main line I've been using is the edge tackle 0.12 millimeter, and the hook length I was using was 07 and 08 in the fluorocarbon. I'll just show you the, the spool. So that's the 08, and the main line was the 012 premium line which I use for, for my rigs. And I also set up a light, light float with a style rig. Um, I don't know if you can see it there, but I've got a bit of a spread bulk of styles and then nice drop down that with some small styles and a light float, just a 0.4 Chianti style float. Hoping to obviously catch up in the water on the drop it hasn't really worked today and uh, I'd have a few fish on it but uh, the more positive rig was definitely better. I don't know if it's because of the pike that the fish didn't want to come off the bottom but on another day that's a, a devastating rig and I'll show you my hooks. So the hooks I was using typically were Drennan uh, fine match size 18. Uh, and I've also been trying some of the new finesse hooks. I believe it's the same pattern, slightly different colour, and in that case a 16. So I did change up to that and I've found that to be a really good hook as well. Elastic-wise, I've used the Edge Tackle 4 to 6 solid. It's a beautiful elastic, really, really nice and soft, very, very versatile. And I just put that through the tip of my pole. So I've got enough shock absorption on the bite and the strike and then I'm playing the fish quite quickly and I think that's really essential when you are getting trouble with pike obviously you can get the fish and swing them in quicker. I did catch on caster um, burying the hook in, in a caster uh, but I've probably caught more fish on maggot probably most fish I've caught on red maggot today so after a good start 
my match kind of petered out a bit with those pipe strikes and then um, it sounds like Paul's beating me but I've really enjoyed the day it's a wonderful venue somewhere I'd love to come back and fish a match uh, perhaps one of the Northern Master qualifiers next season but you can just see the potential it's wonderful to catch uh, roach like that so I guess we'll pack up and see how we've done the scales of justice yeah and uh, we discussed what was going to happen before the match didn't we really and it's pretty much gone that way you've well, it seems like it yeah you've definitely um, caught some better stamp fish on the bottom haven't it, you it seems that way and uh, you've put the ground bait in which has attracted plenty of small fish and uh, you've had a bit of pike trouble haven't you yeah the last couple of hours that's really what's messed me up really yeah i was um you know, I wasn't catching the stamp that you were, but I was catching quite well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I lost. I think I've had four pike on, and um, I'll be a four. That's kind of. I, I gambled in the last sort of hour and uh, hoping to catch a couple of nice perch, but failed. Yeah, well, the thing is with that ground bait and a bit of chopped worm, you can catch some good perch. You can yeah. also fluke a bream now and again. There's been odd bream caught, and when you catch them here, the big ones. I'm going to zero that. We better get validation of that, haven't we? You got that, Mr. Chappy? Right, let's see what you got, boss. Nice deal nut you got there. Where'd you get that from? <laughs> Oh, well, they are small, these, aren't they? Don't rub it in. <laughs> hey, I shouldn't laugh, should I? Because I've been in that position before, and I know where I've laughed and it got beat. Right. Six pound Mo eleven. Six pound Chappy calls it thirteen. Six, six, six twelve. Six. We've got. Between. It says thirteen. <laughs> it says eleven. What we me. got? What's camera say? Six, six thirteen. 13. Yeah. Here Shall I, I get back to Stockley Park and <laughs> see what Var has to say? Yeah. <laughs> I just quickly show them to Chappy. So yeah. It's been good, great sport. I mean, we've fished for four hours, haven't we? So yeah. You know, it's great. Well, sport. and if you take away these times for. Uh, Catching up with a bit of cup of uh, a cup of tea and a sandwich and stuff <laughs> like that, and a bit of banter with Chappy. We've fished for about three and a half. Oh, I can feel <laughs> I can feel more than six pound coming on here, James. Whether I it reckon. beats your six pound eleven, oh, or pretty, was it thirteen? No, I'm pretty sure you beat me there. You've got some beautiful roach. Some nice fish there, isn't there? Yeah. I'll, I'll hold this so Chappy can see me smiling. <laughs> £12.5? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> well done, Paul. <laughs> Let's have a look at them. Yeah, we'll have a look at them. Okay. Yeah, you've got some quality fish there, haven't you? Well over eight ounce, some of them. Yeah, there's some nice fish there, isn't there? Well done, mate. What yeah. a wonderful venue. It is. And now you can see why it was such a great final. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to fish some of the... Uh, I think you've got to qualify here next year, haven't you? Yeah, we have. Yeah. We have one on, on Murfield Water yeah. and one on here next year. Well done, mate. That's fantastic. Yeah. Put it there. I better get the pound ready. You better get that pound <laughs> sorted, aren't you, mate? Yeah. Well done. I'll put these back so uh, the lads can f catch them at the weekend in the match. And that was great. <laughs> Cheers, James. It's is good there, to see you again. Is there a problem near here? I need to go and drown my sorrows. <laughs> it's good to see you again, anyway. And you, mate. He still wants that pound. Look at him. It's the pound that matters. <laughs> Give him that bloody I've pound. I've got to get one in the van. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all in the van. Where have I heard that one before? Oh, you will just it. throw it out the window, won't you? Yeah. Driving off in a hole. Yeah, that was good. I've enjoyed that. Shall we say? <laughs> Do I dive in or not? No, it's too no, it's too muddy in here. Yeah. 
Right then, mate, I've got oh, your pound. Oh, I've one. been polishing it for you, so the pound Whoa. is back in Yorkshire, all right? Thank you very much. <laughs> Look at that, chappy. <laughs> well done, mate.